Hello and welcome everybody to the Senior Center on this rainy Monday. I'd just like to take a moment to welcome Claudia Dexter and Patty Tupin. Patty and Claudia are from Elderwood Home Care, formerly Senior Comfort Services, That's right. Elderwood Home Care, and they're here to talk to you today about diabetes, some myths and facts, and they've also brought, I, I heard, something special for all of us, for so, dessert. for dessert. So, let's give them a round of applause. Welcome. Thank Thanks, everyone, and thank you, Marsha, for having us back again. Um, some of you might remember us doing the hydration presentation last year around the summertime, and we're back again with a new topic um, about diabetes one and two and myths and facts. Um, and I just want to say a couple of things about our agency and who we are and why we're here. We do private home care. and We help seniors stay home independently and provide respite care for family caregivers. And we've been in your neighborhood for 13 years. And this is our new name, as Marsha mentioned, Elderwood Home Care. Same agency, same people, same philosophy. So if you ever need someone in that department, call us. We'll help you out or we'll point you in the right direction. Uh, so today's topic is obviously about diabetes, and I'm just going to say a few things about that. This is the bad news first, okay? <laughs> uh, diabetes can strike anyone from any walk of life, and it does, in numbers that are dramatically increasing. In the last decade, the cases of people living with diabetes jumped almost to 50%, to more than 29 million Americans. Worldwide, it's it afflicts more than 380 million people, and the World Health Organization estimates that by 2030, okay, that's about 14 years from now, that number of people living with diabetes will more than double. Today, diabetes takes more lives than AIDS and breast cancer combined, claiming the life of one American every three minutes. It is the leading cause of blindness, kidney failure, amputations, heart failure, and stroke. What a lovely, happy topic for lunch. <laughs> a couple of things, uh, I, I, I guess I like to share statistics because it gives you an idea of the impact it has on our lives. For uh, the prevalence in seniors, the percentage of Americans that are age 65 and older remains high at 25.9% where 11.8 million seniors are both diagnosed and undiagnosed because a lot of us have it, but we're not diagnosed yet, and then we find out when, when we have a complication and it's too late, and then you go to the doctor or the hospital for one reason or another. As far as new cases, there are 1.4 million Americans diagnosed with diabetes every year. And then there's pre-diabetes. And uh, in 2012, 86 million Americans aged 20 and older had pre-diabetes. This is up from 79 million in 2010. So a lot has to do with lifestyle and our diet. And I want to, again, um, introduce Patty Tupin. She's our nurse at Elderwood Home Care. Um, Patty has an extraordinary history of experience in um, home care and, and being a nurse and supervising our caregivers and she will be the authority on this topic today. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so I want to welcome Patty, and she's going to um, talk to you, and, and you can refer to the handouts that you have in front of you, and that's it. Hello everyone. Um, so our goal today is to share the great information that we have regarding diabetes. Um, we want to set the record straight and dismiss many of the myths that people hear about diabetes and give you the facts. So like Claudia mentioned, um, diabetes is a fast growing disease in our country, particularly in an adults age 65 and older. To put in perspective how common diabetes is getting, one adult every 23 seconds is newly diagnosed with diabetes. So that being said, many people in this room may have diabetes or you may know someone that has diabetes. Um, so it's very important that we discuss some of the tips and how to prevent diabetes and tips on living with diabetes. Um, so before I really start um, about giving the facts about diabetes, I uh, just wanted to reach out to everyone and see what 
um, what words came to mind when you think of diabetes? Does anyone have, what comes to mind when you hear the word diabetes? Sugar, yep. That's a great one, yeah, it's commonly associated. Any other words that come to mind? Runs in the family, I heard someone say, yep. Shots, yep, yep, those are all great words that definitely tie in. Diet, very important, yep. All right, good. So yes, those are all words that certainly tie in to um, diabetes. So um, to begin, I certainly want to talk about what diabetes is. So diabetes is a condition where there is too much sugar or glucose in your blood. And the sugar gets there from the food that we eat. So when you eat fruits, vegetables, carbohydrates, those are all broken down in your body by a hormone called insulin. Insulin takes that sugar and it brings it to different parts of your body that use it for energy. And diabetes, um, you may not have enough insulin to break down that sugar, or the insulin that you do have is not effective in breaking down that sugar, so it just builds up in your blood. So one thing to um, keep in mind is, you know, you have that excessive amount of sugar in your blood, so what difference does it make? Um, and we always hear a common myth that um, diabetes is not a serious disease, which is very untrue. <laughs> That's a, a myth that we definitely want to um, dismiss because diabetes is a very serious disease. Um, diabetes, like Claudia mentioned, um, accounts for many deaths um, in our country. And it also increases your risk for uh, a heart attack or having a stroke. It also can lead to serious complications when it is left untreated or if it's uncontrolled. So diabetes can lead to um, blindness. It can lead to kidney failure. It can also lead to uh, loss of feeling in your feet and legs. Um, which also, if you lose the feeling in your feet or your legs and you get an injury, you're not going to be able to feel it. So it really can affect just, you know, every part of your body. There's also uh, different types of diabetes. Uh, type 1 is most common in children and young adults. And type 1 is where you, you need the shots. You need to have insulin every day. Um, in type 1, you do not make enough insulin, um, so you need to have insulin replacement. Type 2 is the most common, and type 2 is really what you hear about most often. And type 2 is very common in older adults. Um, type 2 is when um, you may not make enough insulin, or the insulin that you do have is just not effective. So type 2 can be controlled with uh, medication, but it also can be controlled with diet and exercise as well. So another question I have is, um, what do you think causes diabetes? Does anyone know what the cause is for diabetes? Autoimmune it can be. For type 1, it is um, an autoimmune, but they don't really know what triggers that autoimmune response for type 1. Gi genetics is a risk factor. Yep. Yeah. Age of origin. What was that? Agent Orange. Agent Orange, the pesticide? <laughs> no, yeah, we've heard, yeah, exactly. You're hearing all sorts of things now. Um, but actually, it was kind of a trick question. There is actually no known cause for diabetes. The things that you do normally hear about are risk factors. So those are factors that are just increasing the likelihood of developing um, diabetes. Um, so an, a big myth that we hear about often is that people that are overweight will develop diabetes, which is not true. Um, risk, f it's again, it's a risk factor. Being overweight and especially carrying your weight around um, your midsection increases your risk for um, developing diabetes. Um, but just because you're overweight does not mean you're going to develop diabetes. A person of normal weight um, may develop diabetes. There is no exact cause on what can um, trigger diabetes in someone. 
Um, but there are other risk factors that, um, that some people brought up. So genetics is definitely one of them. If you have a family history, you have a mother, father, or sister or brother that has diabetes, you are more likely to develop diabetes yourself. Um, also, people of different ethnic backgrounds, um, African Americans, Hispanic, and Native Americans are most at risk for developing diabetes. Um, other risk factors are high blood pressure and high cholesterol. Those also increase your risk for developing diabetes and also having a sedentary lifestyle. So when you're not active, um, you may not be overweight, but if you still have a sedentary lifestyle where you're not really up moving around, um, it increases your risk for developing di diabetes as well. Another um, myth that I wanted to talk about uh, for the, ca uh, the supposed cause of diabetes is eating too much sugar can cause diabetes. Um, sugar is, you know, a word that you hear often associated with diabetes, um, but you do not get diabetes um, from eating too much sugar. Eating too much sugar is not good for you, um, so it's more important to focus on having a healthy diet. Um, How many people thought you could get diabetes from having too much sugar in your diet? I yeah. did too, actually. So that's yeah, it's like I said, a very big myth. Um, there are people that have a sweet tooth and do eat a lot of sugar, but they won't necessarily develop diabetes. Um, but one research uh, study shows that it's actually not... Um, sweet foods and um, desserts that um, are linked to diabetes. It's actually um, sweet beverages. So people are drinking too many beverages that are um, just filled with sugar. And why is that? <laughs> Could talk about hydration. <laughs> um, right, a lot of people think that, you know, having fruit juice or fruit punch or soda or sweet tea, um, those are all ways of, you know, staying hydrated and um, drinking enough liquids throughout the day. But all those beverages have a lot of sugar in it. Um, and sugar is just, you know, something you want to have in moderation. Um, and just for an example, um, you know, I see a lot of people that will have um, soda throughout the day. And one 12 ounce can of soda has 150 calories, 40 grams of carbohydrates, in 10 teaspoons of sugar in one can of soda. So it's a lot of sugar just to have in one serving. Um, another myth that I've heard too is that um, you can catch diabetes from someone else. <laughs> and that is one thing is definitely not true, right? Um, I think sometimes it can, there's a misconception because it can run in families. So you know, you might think because you live with this person and they have diabetes that you may get it as well. But it's more of a um, uh, genetic factor that plays a part in diabetes um, or uh, similar lifestyle choices as well, you know, not eating healthy and not exercising. Has anyone heard of any other myths about the causes of diabetes or has any questions so far? How many of you know someone that has diabetes? Mm -hmm. All right, so almost half the people in the room. Yeah. All right, so um, one other thing I'd like to talk about um, are signs and symptoms of diabetes. Um, how do you know if you have diabetes? Does anyone know how you'd figure out? How do you think <laughs> you would know? Okay, <laughs> so yes, you can certainly shut that. The first thing that went was my eyesight. Yes. Wow. I could not, I have tripod. I couldn't see any one of them. Everything was blurry. Yes. I had an insatiable thirst for liquid. I couldn't drink it up. I would drink a half a gallon of water and wow. instantly put the glass down here. And still be thirsty. Yep. Yep, so exactly. Those are um, some of the top signs of diabetes is uh, blurred vision, so or vision changes. Uh, but then there's also excessive thirst, so feeling like you can't get enough water, um, and also excessive hunger. You'll finish a meal, and you'll still be hungry and looking for more. Um, and then another sign that's very common is um, frequent urination. So your body tries to get rid of that extra sugar that's in your blood 
through your urine, so you'll be running to the bathroom frequently. Um, some other signs um, are dry and itchy skin or cuts that take a while to heal um, or pain or numbness in your hands, legs, or feet. Um, so these are all just general signs and symptoms. You may not have any signs or symptoms at all, but when you go to the doctor for a checkup, your blood work may reveal something different. So everyone is different. Um, and if you experience any of these signs or symptoms, it does not mean you necessarily have diabetes, but it's something to talk to your doctor about. Um, so that leads me to how diabetes is treated. Um, so type 1 diabetes, like I said, you, people need insulin um, on a daily basis, and they also need to diet and exercise. With type 2, it may be controlled through diet and exercise alone. You may not need medication. Um, but some people do need uh, medication added. And it's not necessarily a shot. It can be a pill that you take um, one or two times a day. Um, but it's very important, too, to control your diabetes through diet and exercise. A pill alone is not going to help you control your diabetes. Um, so one of the myths that uh, we hear quite often is that people with diabetes should eat special diabetic food. And you go to the supermarket and you'll see a lot of things that are labeled sugar-free um, or no sugar added um, or low carbs. So, um, you know, that's just some advertising, too, for people that do have diabetes that you think it might be a better option. But a diabetic diet is basically just a healthy diet that everyone should be um, eating on a daily basis. So um, a diet should could be um, low in fat especially saturated and trans fat. It should be um, minimal salt and sugar, and the meals should really focus on non-starchy vegetables and lean protein, as well as whole grains. Yeah, and on your hand diet, you'll actually see on the back side, there's uh, um, just a, an example of how to um, create your plate. So 50% of your plate should consist of a non-starchy vegetable. So it should be something like zucchini or summer squash or broccoli or asparagus, spinach, um, a nice salad. And then the 25% should be a lean protein, so a grilled or baked chicken. Um, and then the other 25% can be a starchy vegetable like corn or acorn squash or butternut squash or some type of whole grain. So it could be um, brown rice or quinoa. Um, or you could have some whole wheat bread on the side as well. Um, so those are just a guideline of not just someone's diabetes should be eating, but everyone should. You know, a diet that is um, low in fats um, and low in sugar and starches um, is just an overall healthy um, diet. And then exercise. Exercise is very important. And I've heard, you know, every excuse on why people cannot exercise. <laughs> but it's very, very important to incorporate exercise um, throughout the day. You know, even 30 minutes a day. And I know a lot of senior centers, too, offer great classes. But even when the nicer weather comes, you know, taking a walk or even putting on music and dancing, you know, anything that's going to get you up and moving is very important. Um, so another myth that um, you may have heard about diabetes is that people with diabetes cannot eat any sweets or chocolate. And that's not true entirely. <laughs> Again, um, you know, everything is in moderation. Um, you know, if you can have, you know, a sweet or dessert in a small proportion, but your focus should really be on the main meal that consists of the healthy fruits, vegetables, grains, and lean proteins. So it's not that you, that they're off limits and you cannot have them, but it's something that, um, to have in moderation, and not on a daily basis. And, you know, it's just, um, people don't realize, too, that um, with diabetes, too, you need to watch what you eat before you go to bed. Um, I do help a client that um, is diabetic, and he thinks it's okay to have an ice cream and an apple turno turnover every evening before bed. And he wakes up the next morning, and his blood sugar is in the 200s, and he doesn't know why. <laughs> 
So it's very important to keep in mind that, you know, whatever you put in your mouth is going to affect your body and your blood sugar, whether you're a diabetic or not. What about when, like, when you eat the sweets and the combo with the protein, is that matter if you're combining it with Yeah, well, for diabetics, it's really good before bed to keep a steady blood sugar overnight is to have um, something that's low carb, but uh, a protein as well. So, like, peanut butter crackers um, or, you know, a yogurt, something that's going to um, have a little protein in it as well. Having a sugary dessert before you go and sleep where your body really slows down it's only going to increase your blood sugar. So if you are going to, you know, indulge in dessert or chocolate or sweet, it's better to have it um, earlier in the day, not right before you go to bed. So speaking of dessert, this uh, little yellow card that everyone got today is a couple of diabetic recipes. Now this doesn't mean that, you know, you just experienced the pumpkin parfait. Did you guys like that? Did you like it? <laughs> I thought it was really good, and uh, it's just a healthy way to eat, really. It doesn't have to be like that diabetic food is not tasty or not delicious. It's what you are putting in it. So the other on the flip side is the banana chocolate ice cream. I would definitely, I'm planning on trying making that myself at home for my family. Um, we hope you enjoy those tips, and um, we hope you like the dessert, too. Yeah, there's all sorts of modifications that you can make, too, with desserts. Um, like I said, there's a lot of sugar-free um, jello, pudding, um, and whatnot that you see in the grocery store now. Um, so one other myth I do want to discuss about diet um, is fruit is a healthy food. Therefore, it is okay to eat as much of it as I wish. Um, again, everything in moderation, <laughs> and fruit is a healthy food. It is loaded with fiber and vitamins and minerals but it's also high in carbohydrates and natural sugars. So it's something that you really um, cannot have a whole bunch of it because it will raise your blood sugar. Um, you know, having four or five apples throughout a day is going to raise your blood sugar, even though, you know, apples are good for you, but um, you really need to talk to a doctor um, about the proper amount um, of fruit that you should be eating during the day when you're a diabetic. Apples. Apples are, are high. Yep. Apples are high in sugar. So um, that's why I brought that one up is a lot of fruit, even, you know, cantaloupe, um, you know, things like that. They're high in natural sugars and high in carbohydrates. So it just accumulates in your blood and makes your blood sugar higher. Um, so also to prevention um, now is really a key to, to um, this growing epidemic of people getting diabetes. Um, and it's really actually similar to the treatment of diabetes. Um, maintaining a diet that is um, filled with fruits and vegetables and whole grains and fiber definitely help to prevent diabetes. It can help keep you at a healthy weight as well. And again, like I said, exercise and getting active are great ways to, um, again, just maintain a healthy lifestyle. Um, so there are some tips that are on the handout here that go over um, some tips on preventing diabetes. So like I said, um, just increasing your physical activity, 30 minutes at least five times a week is um, a good goal to aim for. Increasing your fiber. Fiber is wonderful, but again, you can't have too much, too much of it. <laughs> um, but fiber is a great way to actually lower um, your risk for heart disease and diabetes. Um, and healthy meal options, um, you know, just keeping foods that are low in fat and minimal processed sugars are best. Um, just having healthy snacks with you too, um, like trail mix, some nuts, or like I said, peanut butter crackers, um, not things that are, um, you know, like the Debbie snacks or whatever. Those, yeah, yeah, flour and sugar are, um, will spike your blood sugar. Um, and again, to monitor food proportions, um, everything in moderation. I can't, you know, stress that enough. Um, you can't have too much fruit, or uh, it's good to try to find a healthy balance and one that works for you. Um, and then it's also to ideal maintain an ideal body weight. So, like I said, especially around if you carry your weight around your waist, 
that is a risk factor for diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. So it's good to stay active and eat healthy and you will maintain a healthy weight. So does anyone have any questions? Mike? <laughs> There's been a lot of talk in the press about uh, bypass surgery and the effects on type 2 diabetics after they come out of the surgery. What research is being done? Do you see the correlation between going, coming out of the surgery and no longer having a blood sugar issue? as opposed to going in as a overweight <coughs> diabetic mm -hmm. having diabetes. So Right, exactly. I have not um, read any research on that. So what exactly is gastric bypass or heart bypass? Okay. So ga gastric bypass is affecting the blood sugar in which way? It's instantly curing type 2 diabetes, diabetes or diabetic. Well, I, I know gastric... Yeah, I would say because gastric bypass makes your your um, stomach smaller, so you're eating less food, so you're consuming less sugar. I'm talking about instantaneously out of surgery. They have no need for any medication. You know, I, I don't know. That's something I definitely have to look into. Um, I, I haven't heard that instantane instantaneously. I would just say maybe. Um, There's an, another factor to having that surgery is that there is um, a pre, um, before you have yes. the surgery, the doctors prepare you for that surgery. It's, it's quite serious. So you're on a special diet beforehand, beforehand yeah. and sometimes for many months. So that dramatically changes and affects your health before you can qualify to have the surgery anyway. So that's already been changing that person's health status. And then once you have the gastric bypass, you could be on liquid food for quite some time or extremely small portions multiple times throughout the day. So that is also dramatically going to affect, um, you know, the status of sugar in your blood. So it's, it's so kind of like, it's a little bit of common sense. no possible cure involved in that surgery? I wouldn't know well, that. Yes, I haven't heard. I would, like I said, it's be, have to be something I look into, but um, I have not heard of it being a cure for diabetes, of going under the gastric bypass. But like Claudia mentioned, I know there's, um, you know, before you have the operation, there are quite a few diet changes, and you have to lose weight and prove that you can lose weight. And it's certainly a great positive Start side it. effect and there's a lot of reasons why people have that surgery and right. diabetes is one of many of the problems that they're trying to fix yeah. by having that done. Right, and I think one thing to keep in mind with type 2 diabetes, you know, it's not going to be some instantaneous cure for it. Um, it really has to do with lifestyle changes, um, and, but sometimes that is not enough. Um, but really, um, type 2 diabetes, it's linked to like I said, being overweight, not eating a healthy diet, not exercising. So those factors are something more to take into consideration rather than jumping into a surgery to look at that for a cure. So. I don't know if a single insurance company is going to pay for gastric bypass surgery to fix diabetes. Yeah, exactly. Right. Very good point. Yep. <laughs> One of the things that you talked about today, uh, gastric is you mentioned occasionally spikes in blood sugar. Yep. So you uh, mentioned to this audience the goal of a diabetic once they have been diagnosed as a diabetic as far as they can take. Yep. So, I mean, the goal for a diabetic, um, it, it's actually, it's very individualized. You have to... It, of different foods are going to affect people differently with diabetes. So it's really knowing your body and what foods um, are going to spike or bring up your blood sugar. So certain foods, like I said, that are high in carbohydrates or high in sugar, are those are going to spike um, your blood sugar. But everyone's different on their um, caloric intake. So yours are... Certain foods and drinks. Right. That most people don't right. Dangerous, that are right. Like orange juice. Yes. Even orange juice, apple juice, even yet yeah, milk. Those all contain sugar. Um, and again, it's you know having small amounts um, of 
those beverages. Um, even, you know, juices that are labeled 100% all natural juices, they still are high in carbohydrates and sugars. So one tip I always, you know, give to people with diabetes or just people that are um, trying to watch what they eat is just to dilute it with half water and half juice. That way you're cutting back on the sugar and the carbs. So are there any other questions or comments? I just like to know why so many children are being diagnosed with type 1. My granddaughter, four years old, just got diagnosed in January. Oh, gosh. What a road, but we go to Jocelyn. Jocelyn in Boston? Yeah, yes. The, uh, the first two floors of clinic, the rest is research. Right. But there's so many kids that are out there with type 1. Right, and it's increasing. And like I had said through the presentation, there's no known cause. It is autoimmune, like you had brought up, but they don't know what triggers that autoimmune response in young children um, and adults. To destroy the island, right? Yes, in the pancreas, yep. And then you, they're not making enough of the insulin. Yeah, I just went to camp mm -hmm. with the other grandmother. The knock off to the... The Clarabot and Diabetes Camp, yep. and it was wonderful. We learned how to do the glucagon and the oh, shots, good. and we learned how to do all of that. That's wonderful. <clears throat> and it was families from coming all over, and that camp is strictly for diabetic children. That's great. But the guest speaker talk, she thinks they won't cure it, but they'll have better break. Right. They are. I actually read recently that they're doing um, insulin. They're taking um, insulin stem cells and they are putting them into um, children with type 1 diabetes to see if, um, you know, you get insulin replacement from an, someone else. And that seems to be working. Um, yeah. Do you still have to go to school and, and uh, educate yourself as an RN? Yes. To what's going on with the diabetes? Um, not particularly diabetes, but, um, you know, we have to have continuing education. Um, every two years we get, um, we have to turn in, um, you know, a certificate saying that we um, did 15 hours of continuing education. So as an RN, yeah, constantly. But it's also, it's always good to know. My best friend has type 1 diabetes, and she was diagnosed when she was 28. And late. Exactly, right. Then it's a psychological problem. It is. When it, you're teenagers. Yes, right. So it really affects every everything. When you go out to eat, even when you go to exercise, you need to check your blood sugar before and after to make sure it doesn't drop. So, yes, yes. I know it's a lot. <laughs> hey, you're doing... Yes, well, you're doing a great job, especially by going to camp and... Yeah, we're going to learn how to take care of her. That's wonderful. Well, she has a great family support. That's great. And she's got a pump now. She's only she's been got the pump? She got, Good. She was diagnosed January 2nd and saved at the continuous school coach launch. Yeah. And she don't, she's so tiny, and she's got the pump. Good. That way she's not worrying about having to inject herself all the time. And she needs to get six shots a day. Oh, so we're getting there. Yeah. yeah. You know, that, that example for the type 1 shows that that living with diabetes can be, it's, it's, it's very draining emotionally, financially, um, physically, you know, having to maintain that. And so um, if we can help prevent it, if we don't have it, can help you know, live a healthy lifestyle and avoid that, you're saving yourself a lot of trouble in the long I, run, I think for sure. could have been genetic. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know how Sadie got it. But um, I knew she, I was very suspicious of it. Yeah. And then, they have special camps for kids where they can go and play right. and be with other kids that have diabetes because it's it's because there's so much maintenance involved and they yeah, then they don't the feel like the odd man out right. when they're with a whole bunch of other kids that have the same thing because it's there's a they're lot to do. They all come in and <coughs> to test their blood sugar. Yep. Oh, they all okay. come in, then they get up in the middle of the night and they have the camp directors that go around and check their blood at night. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. That's so wonderful. It's, it's a beautiful program and the education was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, wonderful. But yeah. I am. You know, I mean, it's a sad thing. I think, I don't know if they'll cure it, but they'll get better breakthroughs. Yes. Which is That's the whole what we're looking yeah. for. Better, better breakthroughs. And they tested the artificial pancreas a couple years ago wow. at the camp. There were some kids that volunteered for that. Wow. So, you know, outside the body. Yeah. The artificial wow. pancreas. Yeah. So, 
There's a lot of research going on. Right. Which will help both of them. Yeah. Like one and type two. It will, exactly. It definitely will. Yeah. Well, thank you for your presentation. Oh, I appreciate it. Does anyone else have any other questions or comments? All right. Well, thank you very much for having us. Thank you so yep, much. Thank you. Us. We hope you enjoyed that. Found it interesting. Thank you.